Hi, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. We are at Creativation 2018, and today we were with Tim Holtz in the Ranger booth. Don't worry, this is just a highlight from a previous video we had no sound for, so let's get started with his demonstration. So many cool samples. Micro ideas. Oxide. Clean paper. Rarity. Not clean. Okay. You going live or are you just doing it? Um, I'm just doing, just doing it? it, but I'm gonna go live. Dina's live now, and you were live, so I'm trying to like. Cool. Do you want an intro or are you just editing into a video? Just tell me what you want. Uh, a little intro would be good. Okay, go for it. Ready? Hey everyone, it's Tim Holtz. Nope. Okay, go ahead. Hey everyone, it's Tim Holtz and I'm here in the Ranger booth at Creativation 2018 to share a couple of new things in the world of Distress. Now, uh, even though we have 12 new colors of Distress Oxide, which are fantastic, we also have a couple of new um, kind of accessory items to go with Distress. One, of course, are the Distress blending brushes. These brushes are very, very cool to blend ink, work with stencils, and I'll share what we can do with that. And, of course, Distress Resist Spray, which creates a very cool resist through stencils or spraying it on paper. And you can even use this stuff with your favorite embossing powder because you can emboss with this spray. Pretty cool. So let me take you through and share some of the demos. We'll start with Resist Spray really quick. Now this is a very milky consistency. It looks white, but it will dry completely clear. And it is designed to go on any surface. We can spray it on glass, on metal, on fabric, on wood. Uh, but on paper, of course, we can use our inks and our other mediums with it. And all we need to do is take our paper. It doesn't really matter what kind of paper you work on, whether it's mixed media heavy stock or watercolor or your journal or anything like that. But when we do spray it, we want to work in a box. We don't even want to work on our trusted craft sheet because this stuff, when it dries, it will actually dry with a texture. Uh, it's a very light texture, but you can kind of see where it looks embossed. It's got a little shine to it, but that texture will stick to every surface. So if you put it on your craft sheet, you're gonna end up scraping and scraping and scraping it off. So I just have over here a cardboard box with some paper that I can throw that in. I can take my spray. I don't need to shake it. I don't need to do anything. On my tag, I'm just gonna spray in a little bit of an area. On my watercolor, I'm just gonna kind of splatter it a little bit because we can control different patterns. Now, the key to working with this when you are finished spraying is just take a baby wipe and wipe off the spray nozzle direct. You don't need to unscrew this. You don't need to flush it out. As long as you just wipe off that spray nozzle, you are good to go. We don't have to worry about it clogging up. Now, drying time of resist spray. Well, the fine mist actually dries really quick. Okay, Wherever that fine mist was in here, it is already dry. The thicker drops probably takes about a minute or so to dry, but it is a heat stable medium. So if you're in a hurry, you can wave over this with a heat tool and you can dry it or let it air dry. So you don't have to heat it, but you can if you're in a hurry. If you're working in a journal, you're like, I gotta go, I'm ready to go. Now, this is already dry. And what's interesting is that it still has that same shine, wet or dry. So for me, when I'm working with it, I always spray it, I'll take my heat tool, just to make sure, because you can't really tell unless you touch it, if it's going to be wet or dry, because you can see that shine that's there. All right. So once this is finished, we can go over it with a lot of different mediums. We can use our Kybal inks over the top, we can do a wash down watered acrylic, or of course we can use Distress. We can use Distress Oxide. Uh, we can even use, let me grab this in here, Distress Crayon, right? We can use our Distress inks, our Distress stains. This is stain. This is crayon, this is oxide. Now these happen to be sprayed through a stencil. So if you're going to use a stencil with your resist spray, you need to make sure that you have a container of water. It's, over here. it's just regular water, just sludgy water. But if you go through a stencil and you spray this, you simply want to make sure that your stencil goes into water immediately. And this resist spray will dissolve. If it dries on your stencil, it's on your stencil, okay? It's part so of the stencil. It's part of the stencil, yeah. It's a textured stencil now, but that's okay. It'll still work. But what's great about this really is the effect that it gives. So here I'm just going to go in quickly with some spray stain. And I'm going to spray some colors. 
And you'll see that when you first apply the inks, especially something fluid, you're not going to notice anything happening. You're going to think, oh, maybe this didn't work. I don't think I had enough on there. <laughs> you will. Trust me. You'll be good. As it starts to dry, that's when you're going to start seeing those resisted areas. Now, remember on this tag, I sprayed this part really heavy and it kind of went a little bit lighter. So I can still go in with my water, spray it. I can still give this a little movement, right? Now I can get rid of this ink. And here's what I also like about working with resist spray. Because in a mixed media world, we've resisted with a lot of things. Embossing powders, gel mediums, even microglaze. I like the fact that it creates a really cool texture. But I also love that it is heat stable, allowing me to do everything I normally do with ink. Meaning, when I go and dab off colors, I don't have to worry about this remelting like you would with embossing powder, right? But take a look at all those tiny little speckles that are starting to show up, right? Every little area that that resist spray went, resists. And you don't even see it, they're so tiny. But I love the effect that this gives. So cool. And it does give it a texture. I wish there was like texture television. It gives it uh, almost like a little orange peel-like texture to our background. All right. Look at that. That is our resisted tag. Love it. So I think just having this new medium that's working with our inks, whether we're doing sprays or whether we're doing stencils, just fantastic. Now, embossing. I'll just show you some samples of that. You know, working through a stencil, I love the fact that we can go solid and fading out. So this was sprayed exactly how I did uh, the ink tag, right? Which over my stencil, I sprayed this heavy and this was faded out. And all you do is add embossing powder. And Ranger's got a ton of embossing powders. The trick to this one, everything ready, right? Powder ready, sheet to catch my powder ready, water ready. <laughs> yeah, because this is a medium that's designed to dry very, very fast, right? We wanted that because if you're doing mixed media, you want to get things to dry. So I'm just going to take my stencil, place it down. I'll take my resist spray and here I'll just go in. I'm going to spray it heavy through the bottom of that. Take this, wipe off the nozzle, pick up the stencil, put it in water, everything ready. Pick this up or on my powder. And once your powder is on there, you're good, right? You don't have to heat it right away. You do have to heat it to melt it, but take a look at how the powder went on there. That to me is fascinating because instead of it being solid, like you would get with an embossing ink, you can see already that it's very kind of pixelated. It's that whole spray pattern. And that's exactly how it melts. Now, if you know anything about embossing powder, embossing powder is a plastic. And when we melt it, it becomes a liquid. And usually when we heat embossing powder, we can get it to smooth out. But on resist spray, it never smooths out. It doesn't matter how many times you spray it and you add embossing powder, it will just add another layer of texture. So this is very, very cool. It doesn't have to be metallic. You know, there's a lot of new uh, ideas and videos that are gonna be coming your way because you can take this and put it over printed paper. You can put it over already finished journal pages, resist most of your page, and then just ink around the edges to get kind of that little eroded inked edge. There's so many possibilities on working with Distress Resist Spray. That's cool. So instead of embossing this, you already see what it looks like when it's melted. Let's talk real quick about the blending brushes. Now the blending brushes, this is uh, the newest tool in the Distress line. Now these little guys, these do not replace our trusted mini blending tool. No. We still need this. If you're going to blend and ink cards, you really need this because this is uh, what it's designed to do. It's designed to put a piece of blending foam on. It's designed that if you have a piece of paper or a tag or anything, we put that in and we can blend with it. But we find in our mixed media world that more and more people are loving stencils, right? We love to work with stencils, we love to put texture paste and grit paste, but when we try to ink through a stencil with a blending tool, a couple of challenges. One is that when we go right into that, we're going to get that dark mark. Or two, if you try to gently go through, it's going to start catching on all of these little plastic pieces of a stencil. And that was the inspiration behind a blending brush. But the blending brush is quite unique because of what it does. Now, I like to have seven brushes. I have one devoted to each color family. Seven of them fit in the mini Distress Ink tin. I've simply indexed mine with paint, taken a little washi tape, masked it off, and took some Distress paint and painted them so I can easily see uh, what's what. What we can do, let's flip this one over and let's ink through the stencil. 
let's go in and take, take our orange. Now the brush, when you remove the cap, you slide this down and expose these natural bristles that are designed to flare out when we go to use it. We can use this with ink or oxide. If you're going to go between the two mediums, you need to wipe this brush off on a baby wipe. So if you're going to go from your ink pads to your oxide, you need to clean this off. Uh, if you do this a lot and you find yourself inking a great deal with these, you'll probably find that it's easier to have a set of these for your inks and a set for your oxide so you don't have to clean them off. But what I'm going to do is simply tap in there and through my stencil I can go in a swirly motion or in a pouncing motion. It doesn't matter. We're not going to leave any crazy marks. But here's where it gets fun with this brush. Okay. I'm going to go in and add some color as my first layer. Now, when you are finished using the brush, all you're going to do is slide this up. That's going to cover the bristles. It's got these little notches right there. They kind of extend out. The lid friction fits over that, and when you close it, the friction fits over that. Okay? So we can put these back in. But now we can add other colors, and let's add another layer of colors. Let's say we want to add uh, some pink to this. All right? When I take this brush, and I open this, maybe I just want to focus some of the color. So instead of blending that large area, if I slide this forward, that's going to make all my bristles come together and that's going to give me a firm little pouncing brush allowing me to concentrate my color. So instead of it flaring out everywhere, I can now focus where I want that color. So this gives you total control whether you want to ink a large area or whether you slide this up and you want to ink a small area. And that's how we're able to create that soft blend. Now, we didn't call these distressed stencil brushes because they're not just for stencils. At the end of the day, they still are blending brushes. So for people that really struggle blending with an ink blending tool, this brush is very cool because I can take this brush, I can take my ink, and this is really good for a lot of people that work in planners, someone that doesn't want to you know, take their week and start inking it and then have a chance to actually ruin their week literally by putting a blending tool right on that layout and be like, oh no, the week is ruined. Forget the week, I'll glue the pages. Um, we don't want to do that. The brush is nice because I can go right in anywhere I want with this brush and just start adding my ink. And that's what's going to give me a great blend when I'm working with this. And I can add as much of that color I want to my background. I can pounce it, I can swirl it, doesn't matter. It's not gonna leave any of those crazy marks. But if I want to get that cool dark edge that we do with a blending tool, it's just like what we do with the stencil. We ink it up. We're going to slide this forward, and now we're going to take just that smaller and just focus along those edges just to build up the intensity of that ink. And that's it. So now when we're done, slide that forward, lock it up, and you're good. That's your blending brush. Cool. Yeah, it is. It's nice. It makes it really easy. It's an awesome tool. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't get up with two. Oh, come on. <laughs> you Thank go. you. You're welcome. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, it, to me, it's just a Thanks, couple of Kelly. mediums. You're welcome. Thanks, Kelly. It's just, I, I like the fact that just even introducing a couple of things just kind of gives us a whole nother use for our inks and oxides and pads and all of that. Now, I'll share with you um, something real quick on alcohol ink, and then I'll do uh, this background again, oxide jet. So that one's pretty cool if you haven't seen it. Alright. Clean this up. I'm a tidy crafter. It's like a party today. Alright. So just real quick, I'll just talk about some things. Um, and if you're here throughout the day, I really encourage you later today to come by. Uh, Sharon Harris will be demoing here in the Ranger booth. She is an alcohol ink painter. Fantastic. She's very entertaining, first of all. Forget all that. But she's talented. And she can paint anything with alcohol ink. She paints on UFO. So alcohol inks, a couple of new things that we have uh, in our alcohol ink lineup. We have six new colors of alcohol inks, and we also have two new colors of mixatives. So the new colors of alcohol ink are crimson, and I'll have these. You're welcome to take photos of them so you can see really where it plays into the palette. Crimson is that dark, dark, deep red. In our yellows, we have dandelion, which is surprising because we've We've had alcohol ink for over 10 years, and yet we've never had a yellow. How is that? Because I think we had a yellow. I thought we did with butterscotch, and then I thought we were going bold with sunshine yellow. Like, we could tell we thought it was really bright. And then we did honeycomb, but dandelion, it's like when you add that to your background, oh, it's so good. It's true yellow. 
added coral to the line. The great thing about alcohol ink is it's not devoted to any one brand, so I can pick colors from other things. So you might recognize this color and this next one, pistachio, right? Great little color, I know. Yeah, pretty similar to your phone case. Love that pistachio color. Now, with alcohol inks, because a lot of people do different patinas and sky and ocean and all of that, you know, these first three colors, aqua and pool, have been in the line since the beginning. Turquoise we released a couple of years ago, but then from turquoise to stream, it was a big jump. So we added aquamarine, which is a really vibrant turquoise color. It fits beautifully into the palette. Then for brown, we've had espresso and teakwood and latte, but I wanted to add sepia. And it has that vintage photo vibe until I was channeling my inner distress with these palettes. And then we've added two new mixatives. Now mixatives, we don't normally add mixative to the line because they are very, very complex. So I'll pass this around so you can get your best shot because you have to kind of, I don't even know if you're getting a shot because it just kind of gets flashy. But the cool thing, we have gunmetal and rose gold mixatives. And rose gold is that beautiful kind of pink champagne color and gunmetal is that gray, rich, dark color. So really excited about those. In addition to these, yeah, feel free to take them. You're gonna to need to angle it just right. Otherwise it will look like silver on the whole thing. In addition to that, we now have an alcohol ink storage tin, right? So this tin is designed for the inker, okay? It is designed to hold 30 bottles of alcohol ink, but it has a tray in the bottom so you can hold your distress oxide reinkers, your alcohol inks, your enamel accents, your stickles, any of that. And when you work with it, you can easily see the colors, right? So you can see there's enough reveal to see a red, a green, a yellow, a blue. But when I take out my colors, I also don't have to worry about all of my bottles falling in together because there is a tray at the bottom where all of your bottles fit in. So when you take them out, because nothing worse than being organized, you take them out and all of these just go in. And then you're just like, yep, okay. Yep. So this is really nice because it does allow me to put all of my colors back in, secure, and then when I go to use it, I don't have to worry if I flip this upside down that my alcohol and bottles are going to go everywhere. So a lot of people are excited about that. Another cool thing that Ranger has done with the alcohol ink is really considered it more of a program. We did this a lot for retailers to kind of help you give your customers permission of what works with what. And we've been doing that throughout um, the years as far as we've got the alcohol inks, the alcohol ink tin, we did alcohol ink UFO, we did alcohol ink cardstock, but more and more people are painting with alcohol ink. So although we have the Distress palette, which we've had for years, we've now taken the same palette and also branded it in the alcohol ink line. So there's an alcohol ink palette. This is how Sharon paints with the inks. She actually puts the inks in this palette, lets them dry, these are completely dry, and then goes in with a synthetic brush, a little blending solution, and does her magic. She paints from a dry palette. So we also created just alcohol ink tool set. Something very basic, but one of the most questions we asked when we were at NAMTA painting is, do you need a special kind of paintbrush? You're painting with solvent. Is it going to eat the brush away? Is it going to be this? And we're like, no, just use whatever brush. And they're like, what about this? What about that? And I'm like, I just need a set of brushes. So it gives them permission to say, oh, I will use my alcohol ink brushes for my alcohol ink. So that's really all these are. There's nothing uh, that significant about it. The other thing we did, of course, um, we get a lot of requests because everybody loves the mini blending tool for distress. They said, would you just do little round felts? I know, see? I know, it's the duh thing, but that's what matters most. It is a big thing because this just allows you now to use your alcohol inks with the mini blending tool. That's it. All right, let's show you this background. Let me grab a little water. I want to share with you, for those that have used distress oxides, and you've seen them, I'll do a quick demo of what the oxides do, and then I'll show you a cool background. Now, if you're not familiar with Distress Oxide, okay, oxides themselves are a fusion of dye and pigment. And I say that because if you look at your regular ink pads, our regular stamp pads are dye ink, okay? It means we can see through them. So on light papers, they're very bright. On darker papers, they start to get dark. An oxide is dye and pigment. So when we apply them, they're vibrant on light paper, but they're also vibrant on dark paper. Because of that pigment, it really holds it up. But what makes it an oxide is that when it gets wet, it not only reacts, but it will oxidize. Meaning when this dries, it will actually dry 
to an oxidized finish, that milky, hazy look on your paper that looks like chalk, but it is not, okay? It's an actual oxidation that happens with this particular ink, which is very cool. So the fact that I've had oxides now for a year and have been playing with them and doing all sorts of things, I thought, what else can I do with them? I've used them on craft and watercolor and this. What happens if I change my paper up? So like any moment would do, you do what you're not supposed to do, which is I thought, what if I used alcohol ink cardstock with my oxide? So I'm going to take alcohol ink cardstock. Now this is a glossy paper, okay? Glossy on one side, matte on the other, not photo paper. Although you can use photo paper. I haven't had much luck with it, but people go, I do it on photo paper. Okay, if you find a good one, let me know. But most photo papers I found get very sticky when I wet it and when I heat it. But this is a clay-based paper, and because it's clay, it does something very, very cool. So here I'm going to go in with my oxides, and I'm going to apply colors to my sheet. Now when I'm doing this, I'm pressing down on my ink pad. Okay, whenever you're going to uh, create backgrounds with your inks, you have to press down, right? If you just drag it, you're not going to get enough ink out of your ink pad. Do a little blue over there. Go in. We'll do a little pink. Let's throw in some greens. All right. There's always room for another one. Okay. Then we're going to go in and spray this with water because we know that that's going to oxidize it. But now I'm able to take my alcohol ink cardstock, glossy side down, and I'm just going to start printing. Now when we work with a lot of ink, wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. So once you make a couple of prints, you're going to flip it over and dry it. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. Okay? You'll be able to add another layer, but if you keep going, you're going to blend all these colors together and they're going to make mud. They're never going to look good. And I'm just using a heat tool just to dry this layer. And you'll see as it's drying, that ink is oxidizing, right? And now I'm just going to go back in, do another layer, and dry it. Okay? Sometimes this has to go through a lot of ugly, but in mixed media world, you're only as good as your next layer. So if you don't like the way something looks, just add another layer. That'll either cover something up or reveal something, you never know. And each time I'm drying my layer, you notice I'm not drying it crispy. I'm just drying it enough to where it's not super wet and I can go back in and make another print. Now you can also look and see what other colors you might want. So here I can see that I want a little bit more uh, blue, maybe a little bit more red. So I'm just going to dry this layer. Now we'll go in. I'll add a little bit more pink and red to that same area. Aged mahogany, I'll put a little bit more of that. And I'll probably go in with a little bit more Mermaid Lagoon. I just add my water. Every time you add color, add water. All right. So what I love about Oxide is that it's a dye and pigment. I can put any color anywhere. So I can put pink on top of blue, and it's going to stay pink. I can put my yellow orange. I can throw a little bit of blue there. Now it's getting good. See, now I've got orange sitting on blue, pink sitting on blue, blue sitting on orange. But you'll see that with every layer we add and we dry it, you see how that's oxidizing, right? See how this thing is getting really hazy. But wait until you see what we do with it, because it gets really cool. All right, one more print just to kind of fill in these blanks. And we'll go there, and I don't know. All right, sadly, I got rid of that. At home, I would just grab another piece of paper, yeah. All right, so let's dry this one completely. So this, to me, is a great background, right? I've got all these colors. I've got this blue and this yellow. And this one, I'm going to dry. But the reveal of this background, crazy. That's what's cool. Because you saw I put so many layers of oxide that it's getting really, really light. Because with Distress Oxide, every time you add water, it will continue to oxidize. So it's not like it just does it and then it stops. You add more water, it will oxidize even more and more. So, now that I have a background, I noticed that by putting Oxide on this paper, I went from a glossy, shiny paper to a dull paper, matte paper. Then I went in and just kind of started feeling it to make sure it was still glossy and noticed, wow, this oxide kind of rubs off. So as any crafter would do, I licked it 
because I wanted to see, <laughs> because I thought, well, if this is coming up and I didn't want to lick my fingers, I'm like, what happens if I got it wet? And when I got it wet, I saw this reveal and I'm like, oh, that's really cool. But then it oxidized again because my tongue was wet and it just didn't. And I thought, I got to put something on this that kind of makes it sealed. So in distress, we can work with our distress microglaze. If there's a little jar of it somewhere. That's behind the spray thing. There it is, thank you. Distress microglaze is a glaze that makes anything distress waterproof. You can put it over your ink and it makes it permanent. But when you put it on this cardstock, it does something crazy. So here I'm gonna go in with a mini blending tool because it fits inside the jar. It's designed that way. Put a little microglaze on there. And now I'm going to glaze this. So we're going to go from this beautiful chalk finish and we're going to reveal all of the layers that we just put on this. And you're going to see all of these colors that we did really start to show off. Every pink, every yellow, every blue, every red just reveal themselves and create this luminous, luminous background. And I just wipe off that microglaze because the microglaze evaporates. It doesn't leave your paper waxy or nothing. So you can still write on it, stamp on it, everything. But now we've got this crazy cool background with oxide just by changing the paper. So you love that look, you love the oxides. This is another great thing because all of those crazy layers that we can do, the orange, the pinks, the blues, they all still show up. Even though by the time it was done, it looked cool, but it was kind of a little muddy. You know, all those oxide layers, you're like, ugh. But every layer had purpose. Can you stop with any ink on it? Absolutely. No, you can use any ink. because even distressed when I... Absolutely, yeah. I prefer archival simply from a clarity perspective, but you could because alcohol ink card socks is actually the most permanent. That's what's really weird. A lot of people think with this paper, because it's slick, everything will wipe off. It's actually more stable or secure than like a watercolor paper. Yeah, because the ink wants to soak into it. That's what makes this work, is that every time I put that in and did this, it took that layer and just baked it into the clay. And then I was able to do another one and it baked it on top. So this movement, that's why you see it. It's like almost everything is kind of frozen there. And that's from heating it into this clay-based paper. But cool, I mean, I, I think. It's just paper now, anything you want to put on it, yeah. I mean, if you touch it, it's just glossy paper. It went right back to this surface. This is alcohol so, alcohol ink cardstock, yes, yeah. because it is a clay based paper. So, that's what's allowing us to bake and get those very crisp layers. Every little, um, every little splatter, every little, I mean, even the tiniest little dots, it's like freezing time when you're doing it. It's cool. We need that. It's another use. Yeah. It just, because it, if people are using oxides and you love it, I mean, because I do, I love working with oxides. Now think about this. Here I just wiped off the whole background because that's what's going to give me the biggest aha moment. But if you did your background, you can also take a stencil and then just microglaze through your stencil right. and then your image would be wow, but right. your background would still right. be oxidized. That's yeah. yeah. It's pretty neat. Thanks. We're so yeah. glad you I've never heard <laughs> please. In my studio, like things go really well and sometimes not so well. Yeah. Some things are good, but I'm just have, if I even think for a moment to think, what if I'm doing it? I never wonder. I never wonder if like I wonder. I'm I'm on it. I mean, really, that's how I learned. A, that's how I learned about resist spray covering everything because it co covered my computer completely. No idea. So you get a new computer now. Oh no, I had to scrape it off with a razor blade, but I didn't realize it. I mean, my computer was off to the side, but as I'm spraying those tiny little things, I'm like, okay, work in a box, right? I learned how flammable alcohol ink was because I, I read that it said flammable, but I'm like, well, how flammable can it be? Flammable? Very. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's actually like a combustible. You know, it starts out blue and then it flashed orange. And I'm like, okay, it's flammable. So, but now I know. Yeah. But I think these new products, and this is what I love. You know, when we come to the show, is, you know, we're obviously overwhelmed because everybody's coming out with something new. But I think if we can add something new to what people already have, it just gives them something to build on, it gives a new interest. You know, even the alcohol inks, a few new colors, that kind of makes all your colors relevant again. And having a way to store them is now going to maybe get you to use them more because now you don't have to always dig through the bucket. So those are the kind of things that I'm trying to 
always keep in my head and you know what can we do different I love working with microglaze I've used that as a resist and gel medium and embossing and Versamark and all that but with stencils or journals to create something a little different that resist spray is very cool and embossing powders are so popular with everybody that you know using these with embossing powders to create this like it's like spray embossing powder so that's just very cool so that was a lot of fun Thank I'm gonna take so a much. quick break to catch my breath and back in a bit. Thank you. Thanks, you bet. Thanks so much for joining us here from Creativation at Hedgehog Hollow. Do hit that subscribe button. We've got lots more new releases to come and we're going to be constantly uploading amazing videos for you. So also give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching Tim and we'll see you again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.